Hey, what's going on guys? It's Nick from Soho Motorsports and today we're going to discuss the new V2 air to air cog setup on Brady's 2012 Nissan 370Z. My supercharged guys, the solution has finally been found. The cog setup has been implemented into the VHR platform and the HR supercharger kits. So all the guys that have ordered their kits and been waiting on this bracket kit, it's here, it's been tested. We're gonna to start to ship these kits out as they become available through production. We tested this rigorously to figure out what was the best solution to enforce the cog setup on this setup. As you guys are very well aware, the previous setup on the backside had the serpentine belt. What happened is Gates ran into a manufacturing issue where they basically stopped making those belts. So for a few months, we did not have a solution as to what we would do with the back belts. Cog setup was introduced, here we are now. Let's talk about Brady's 2012 Nissan 370Z Supercharger Kit that does have this setup on it. So this is gonna be your very basic supercharger kit. It's got the eight pound pulley. The only difference on this setup is instead of going with the 1050cc injectors, he went with the 1300cc injectors, a fuel return system from CJM, a flex fuel kit from Specialty Z, and then the 450 fuel pump in the tank. Now, the reason why he did that, he's going E85. His goal was 600 wheel. That was the goal from the get-go. And to do 600 wheel on the supercharger kit, you could do it on pump, you'd be leaning on it. So E85 is gonna get you to that 600 wheel mark, basically pass that 600 wheel mark and do it safely. If you have E85, that's the way to go. So with this setup, very basic setup, it's got the filter set up as you can see, our air to air V2 kit. It's gonna have the cog set up like we're talking about. Nothing fancy in regards to uh, specific exhaust. He's got an aftermarket dual exhaust, um, test pipes on the vehicle as well, and then a 34 row oil cooler. That's gonna be basically what made this car make the power that he was after. So let's talk about the power that this car made. On pump gas, at 13.6 PSI, it made 561 and 411 foot-pounds of torque. That's really good power. Considering how much rain we've been having the past couple of days here, humidity has been through the roof in the dyno. We were seeing 60 to 65% humidity in the dyno. And as you guys are aware, that's not good for power. So making that type of power on pump gas at that boost level is very, very good. Now, after we did the pump gas, we did the E85 mix. Usually we'll leave about half a tank of pump when we're tuning for pump. One thing, the reason why we do that is because you'd never wanna run a bigger pump low on fuel because what happens is that pump will start to fail over time as it's being deprived of fuel. The fuel is used as lubricant inside the actual fuel pump, hence why you should never run a aftermarket fuel pump below half a tank of fuel. Make sure that it has half tank of fuel. And also too, these things have a saddleback tank. So basically what that means is Fuel is brought in from one side to the other. The fuel pump sits on the passenger side. So if you're running it at half a tank, you're starting to get to that point where that fuel pump's not gonna be submerged inside the actual fuel. Hence, you start to have that fuel pump fail on you over time. So guys that have bigger aftermarket pumps, please ensure that you have more than half a tank in the car at all times. So a half a tank, like I said, we had a 93 in there. We ran it down about quarter of a tank in regards to getting it ready for the E85 tuning. We put 10 gallons of Ignite E90 in it. When we did that, it bumped up the ethanol content to about 50%. So at 50% ethanol, I put down 608 and 442 at 14.2 PSI. Now you'll see a couple differences in regards to that graph. The first graph on the pump graph, you'll see that we stopped the pull a little early. Now, why did we do that? So the reason why we did that is we wanted to kind of prevent it from making too, too much boost on pump gas. So we stopped it at about 7,400 RPM. Now with the E50 blend, we stopped at about 7,800. It allows us to get a little bit more boost. As you can see, it made 14.2. So it made about almost 0.8 of a PSI more, hence getting us that 608 horsepower on this vehicle. Now that is wheel. So 608 wheel, 442 foot pounds of torque. This car is gonna be fun. It's got aftermarket wheels on it. It's got aftermarket tires on it. it doesn't have RAAA compounds on it. So the nice thing about this, we're gonna incorporate our traction control map in there. Well, he'll be able to adjust the traction control on the fly if he wants to. If he wants a little bit less traction control, if he wants a little bit more traction control, he'll be able to adjust that and allow him to have fun if he wants to have fun, or if he wants to basically have traction control on all the time and basically ensure that he wants to make sure that the vehicle does not lose traction or anything, he'll be able to do that through his Ecutech Bluetooth dongle and you can do it through the app. You'll be able to slide it, adjust traction control capabilities, it's a fun thing to have. It's a safe thing to have, especially when you're trying to get used to power. So this car, this client is going from a stock vehicle to 600 wheel. So now let's talk a little bit more about the cog setup. So the big difference that we'll see between the cog setup and the serpentine setup is they're both still belts. It's not like you're going to a different style. They're both a belt. One is a serpentine belt and one is a cog style belt. So the easiest way to explain a cog belt is 
you guys have ever seen a timing belt, how it has a little teeth in it and it basically sits inside the actual gear of the backside of the supercharger, that's a cog setup. A serpentine belt setup is gonna be like what you see on your drive belts. So it is still a belt, it's just a different style of belt. Now, the benefits in regards to going to the cog setup is with the cog setup, you will not see any slip. On the previous setups with the serpentine belt on the back side, over time that belt would get loose and you would start to see boost fall off on the top end. With this setup, it's gonna make boost all the way to red line or wherever you set your red line to. So as you can see in the graph, it comes up and it goes all the way across and it holds it. I did not see any slip at all when I was on the dyno and I did about 25 to 26 pulls on the dyno as we were testing this setup to ensure that the belt, number one, did not fail and number two, to ensure that the actual setup was working properly as it should at higher RPMs and over a repeated amount of time. And it passed both those tests. So this kit is ready to go. We will start to ship these kits out in July as production ramps in and they start making everything. We had to make a couple of pieces to allow this setup to work as we were working with Stillen and Vortec. So working with those two companies, we wanna thank them for helping us with in regards to getting this setup finalized and getting it out to the masses so that everybody can have a solution to the rear belt issue that we were facing over the past few months. So we'll go for a ride in this vehicle with Justin. We'll see what it does. Um, He's a big fan of supercharger cars. You guys already know that. So I'm sure he'll have a lot of input to put into this setup as it is the cog style. And I'm curious to see what he notices on his driving compared to how he drove the previous ones. The number one thing I will say is it probably will come in a little bit sooner. As you can see on the, on the graphs, it tends to want to ramp up quicker and then it holds all the way through the RPM. So that is the one thing that I noticed. So <clears throat> let's go for a ride, see what this car does. And we'll go from there. So we are in Brady's supercharged 370Z with a new cock set up. So, we'll see what it does. This is our first VHR cog install. Been working, working tirelessly with the guys at Stillen and Vortec to get this all dialed in. So we're, we're very, very excited to bring it to market. Yeah, I'm excited to see the difference because we've ridden in a few supercharged ones. So here we go. We got the cooler work shifter, so how good we can do with this. because it's on stock suspension it's got a great clutch on it but i mean it feels like you know, i don't know if it's on stock suspension or not but it feels like the suspension is pretty stock or pretty soft to me so it's absorbing a lot of the initial hit but i mean it took all the power and put it down yeah that's what the new traction control map oh, that's too. right this has got traction control in it so that's why i didn't want to just that's why i put it down yeah so, so. Uh, you saw it here because I, I tell nick like getting a car one of these with 600 horsepower and you romp on it in second i'm expecting this thing to fish tail go go nuts in the back end but no that was very composed yeah so shot straight so it keeps it safe for him too oh yeah so that'll be fun for him man he'll enjoy this because he's going from stock to this right yeah that's a i mean that's that's a 100 percent increase in horsepower if not more so that's <laughs> it's, not, it's considerable i mean you know most of your vhrs do 330 340 right wheel horsepower and a manual with pump 93 and i mean he's at 600 now so yeah ugh. he'll yeah. enjoy it oh yeah so and the cog is more responsive it seems too. It's a lot more responsive. It's yep. uh, I I don't I don't really know how to describe it, how to put it into words, but it definitely feels like uh, it definitely feels like the cog is a lot more on alert when it comes to getting the supercharger spun up. Yep. I mean the way it sounds different, the way it reacts is different. It's quieter and idle, which is strange, but you know it's it's a heck of a lot louder when you're near it when it's actually full tilt. So get a lot more of them them six supercharger noises which i'm i'm all for i for like sure. all the noise all the horsepower everything oh yeah kitchen sink and all <laughs> okay yeah this thing definitely faster a lot faster it's a lot faster than it feels like and it's i, I feel like the traction control the beautiful thing about the traction control is it's not very invasive, which means, you know, so your standard traction control, it just kills the throttle bodies, kills all your horsepower, and then it waits for the tire to come back to a, 
you know, to even the front, and then it gives you all your horsepower back. Well, this one, it just allowed 40, 50% slip. So it started slipping at the top of second, but it was very controllable, very, it's drama free. Like, you know, I use that word a lot, but when you're in a car that's trying to basically kill you all the time when you're on throttle, there's a lot of drama there, but this one is just straight shooting. And yeah, like for some reason, this car doesn't feel as fast as some of the supercharged cars we build, but it really just wrapped the speedo over quick. So, I mean, he's he's going to have a couple handfuls on his hands whenever he gets stuck in this thing. This, yeah. this thing's fast. And you can adjust it, too, so you can take it completely off or you can make it even more, Right. So, which is the nice part about it. Yeah, and I mean, the, the best part, again, is it's, it's completely non-intrusive, so you don't even know the traction control there is working. And, I mean, generally, whenever we build high-horsepower cars, they're on... Uh, you know, a triple eight R or a Neto NT triple five G2. Right. This car is on Yokohama's. This is on like some tires that the car would come with stock. Yep. And I was just able to do a 600 horsepower pull in second gear. And the car kept complete composure, which is amazing. Yep. Put in the work. Yep. That's amazing. Yep. So very, very cool stuff. Yeah, he'll definitely enjoy this. So. All the guys that have had their order on hold in regards to this cog setup, I want to thank you guys for being patient with us and allowing us to find a solution for this setup. We will be getting your kits out here as they come into production. So once again, thank you for your patience. Big thing also too, I want you guys to hit the like button down low, follow us on all social media forms, whether it is TikTok, whether it's Facebook, whether it's Instagram, and also on YouTube. Hit the subscribe button below and we'll catch you on the next one.